Hi everybody, this is Eric at FMLS. This week I'm going to share with you two videos just to keep them short. The first one, this one, is going to be just a general video about CE credits and what you might want to know about those. The second video will also deal with CE credits but specifically how to get them when you come to a class, what you're going to expect, and uh, what you need to do to get those credits from the classes. Okay, so to begin, um, general, again, information about uh, CE credits. The first thing that I have written down here is be aware that when you take a course, it might take up to two weeks for FMLS to get all of that data into the GREC system. Generally, it does not take that long. But we do ask for that time frame, especially, you know, it's now coming up to April. It's our busy season. More people are in classes. Uh, more people are just generally in the market. So we do ask for a two-week turnaround uh, for to, to get your credits into GREC. That being said, GREC also asks for two weeks to report it back, essentially. So long story short, don't wait to the last minute to get your CE credits in. Um, it can take up to a month to get those credits reflected back to you. Now, they'll be in the system between when you took the class until when they actually show on the GREC website. They're not gone. It's just it might take that long for you to see them on the GREC website. Again, generally, it doesn't take that long. That's just the requested turnaround times uh, for the max, okay? Um, the next big thing that you will want to know is if your license expires before July 1st, so June 30th or sooner, then you need 24 credit hours to renew your license. If your license expires on June 1st or after, you will need 36 credit hours, okay? And to make it a little more confusing, so from July 1st, 2015 through July 1st or June 30th, 2016, you just need 36 credit hours. That's it. July 1st, 2016, so a little over a year from now, GREC requires that three of your credits be um, in law. In, in like real estate law, okay? So up till July 1st this year, 24 credits. Up till July 1st, 2016, 36 credits, just general, whatever you want to take. After July 1st, 2016, or I should say after June 30th, 2016, you need three of those 36 credits to be in law, okay? Also, since we're dealing with year time limits here, bear in mind also that to get credit for a course that you might want to take twice, you know, let's say a matrix course is different this year than it was last year, you know, we've got new features, whatever. So you might want to take matrix 101 again. To get CE credits for the same course, you have to wait at least one year and a day between those two courses to get CE credits. Otherwise, you're just going again for updated knowledge. It doesn't count towards your license. Okay, so bear in mind it's a year and a day. Generally, we say 366 days, but that goes into leap year and all that. If you have problems or questions, email training at fmls.com, and they can kind of clarify that for you. Okay, um, also, a great resource, uh, there's two I'm going to mention here. One is if you log into fmls.com and hover over training on the left, there's a My Courses link that you can click on. The My Courses link has two different sections. The top one is classes that you are registered for that have not yet happened. The bottom portion is classes that, sorry, excuse me, classes that you registered for that have passed, okay? That bottom section does not tell you classes that you'll receive CE credit for. That has nothing to do with CE credit. That just shows classes that you've registered for. Whether you were there, whether you got the CE credit, that's a different, you know, horse of a different color. That's just showing you what you had previously registered for. And again, if you have questions uh, to say, look, I see that I registered for this class. Did I attend? Where's the logs? You know, again, email training at fmls.com. They'll be very happy to help you get that squared away. Okay. Um, 
Another thing that you would need to know is when you sign up for a course, for you to get credit toward that CE requirement for GREC for your license, you need to be an FMLS member on the day you take the course. So if you come in on Monday and you take a course and you're not necessarily a, a member until Wednesday, later that week, doesn't count. You have to be a member on the day you take the course. Okay. Also, bear in mind if you have an assistant or you are an assistant and you also have your license and you need something to, you know, towards your license, the credit goes to the login. You know, you should have your own login and you're attending course under your login and your license number uh, for yourself for your credit. Okay. Um, you can't get credit for somebody else. You know, an assistant can't take a credit course. For, for somebody else, for a different agent. That's not honest. Um, another thing that you should be aware, if when you log in to fmls.com, hover over my FMLS in the upper right corner and go to edit my roster information, there's a field there that says license number. If you're an assistant or you're an office manager or a corporate office staff, if you're not generally acting as an agent in your office, but you have your license and you want the CE credits, you know, the classes you're taking to go toward your credit, make sure in that license number field, once again, under my FMLS in the upper right corner when you log in and then edit my roster. Once you go to edit my roster and you look in that license number field, make sure it doesn't say staff. Make sure it has your license number in there. If it doesn't, call in and go to the admin uh, desk and they can help. Uh, to put your license number in there because only if your license number is in there will you be able to get the credit for the continuing education course. Okay, so bear that in mind. Um, another thing that we want you to know is morning classes generally start at 9.30, afternoon classes start, you know, in the afternoon, 2.30, you know, whatever they are starting at. Just check your schedule. Generally speaking, because of guidelines set forth by GREC, there's a certain minimum amount of instruction time per hour that you need to be in the classroom to get those credits. Okay, so having said that, to get the credits for the courses that you're taking when you show up, you cannot be more than 10 minutes late to a course. Okay, we don't want to be, we don't want to play hardball, we don't want to be horrible, nasty people. It's just that we want to play by the rules so that we can continue to offer you CE credit courses and um, we want you to be on time and and you know have value in these courses so you can be up to 10 minutes late for a course and still receive CE credits now you can come in afterward if you just need the uh, knowledge and you just want to show up you know 15 minutes late it's just you know you were running behind that much there was an unforeseen accident at the last minute on 285 you know whatever happens um, you can come in later, it's just that you won't be eligible for CE credits, okay? Um, another thing that you might want to know is that we want you to sign in for your courses. If you've come to a course, you're familiar with that process. We ask you to sign in, we ask you to sign out. And the reason we do this is because we don't have a proctor at our courses, okay? We just rely on the honor method. You know, you come in, um, and you sign in and then you sign out later and that way we don't need to hire a proctor we don't need to increase fees or you know do anything like that because we keep the cost low so that we can offer these free courses okay another thing uh two last things i promise i'm wrapping this up uh you want to unregister for a course if you find out that you can't make it okay as i stated in the there's an earlier video how to cancel a webinar this goes back to that as well. Everything that we do in the training uh, section here. If you miss three courses in a row, you will be put down to what's called a wait list. Okay, kind of like flying standby in the airport. If you miss three courses in a row, the next time you go to register for a course, it's going to say, well, you can't register and get guaranteed a spot because you've missed the last three. We'll put you on the standby list, and that way, if there's an available seat come that morning, you can, you can, you can attend the class. You can sit in on it. Okay, so it's important 
If you find that you need to unregister for a course, sign into FMLS, hover over Training on the left, you can go to My Courses, click on one of those courses toward the top, which are those ones, again, that you haven't actually gotten to yet. They're ones that you're signing up for in the future. Click on that link and scroll down. There will be the opportunity to click on a link there that will unregister for you the course. It's very easy. Okay, so just make sure that you're unregistering for courses that you can't take. Lastly, our course uh, our courses are announced around the 15th of every month. So right now it's toward the end of uh, March, so uh, we have our April courses up. So around the 15th of April, tax day, who's excited? Yeah. Um, around the 15th of April, you will put out the schedule for May, etc. That's how it goes. Generally, within a week or two, those classes start filling up. So make sure that if you're due for some classes, A, don't wait till the last minute. If your license is expiring within the month and you need 20 credits, that's going to be really, really hard. Don't do that. Don't do that bad. Um, so try it. Just do your best. Try to take them as you can. Um, and also unregister for ones that you can't get to. And uh, that should be it. I'm going to go ahead and throw the little link at the bottom of this uh, video to take you to the more specific CE credits about how we're handling that now with sign in and sign out. But that should do it. Have a great day.